I had so much fun biking in the Grand Canyon just now. I want to share with you some tips for biking in our national parks and some words of warning. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. I'm a full-time RVer. I've been on the road for four and a half years and I'm on a mission to see all the national parks. And if that's your mission, you may be surprised by your options of biking in the national parks. Now, before we get started on some tips and words of warning, I want to thank you for helping me with my other mission, which is to hit 100,000 subscribers. So thank you for subscribing and getting me closer each day. In my four and a half years of being on the road, I have biked in Yosemite, Glacier, and just recently the Grand Canyon National Parks, and I am headed over to Zion National Park in a couple days. I was really surprised by my options and I had a lot of fun, so I want to share with you some advantages of doing this biking in national parks as well as some disadvantages or just things to be aware of. Number one, I think the best thing about biking in any of our national parks is it brings the park closer to you. You're able to see more and have a richer experience. You'll certainly see a lot more than you'll see out of a car when Window, and if you walk, you're not going to see as much as you would on the seat of a bicycle. Now, the number two reason, and this is a biggie, is parking. Most of our national parks, the parking lots fill up in season way early. With a bike, my gosh, you don't have to worry about that. There's always going to be plenty of parking for you. Number three, you can go places that cars cannot. I actually biked in Glacier National Park on the Going to the Sun Road. That road is closed in early season to cars and in late season to cars. Now I'm an e-bike rider and I was able to ride all the way to the top. I got a good workout, but at least I didn't have to worry about not making it to the top. Before we go any further, I wanted to show you my bike. This is a juiced Rip Current S Step Through. It has a thousand watt motor and a huge battery. I can actually go 70 miles on a charge. And I love the handlebars. It allows for a more upright, comfortable riding experience. There are quite a few national parks where roads are closed to cars. The only way you can see it is to take a very long hike or possibly a shuttle bus ride. In the Grand Canyon, that would be the Hermit Road. Hermit Road is, I think, seven or eight miles long, maybe 10 or 11. You can only get there by shuttle bus. So it was great to be on a bike. I could see more. I could get off whenever I I wanted. I could take my time enjoying the views and I had a road free of cars. You're just so nimble on a bicycle. When I was at the Grand Canyon, there was elk on the side of the road. Now, people in cars tried to stop, but they really couldn't stop for long because they were blocking traffic. There was no place to pull over. Me, I had the option to stop and I could look at the elk as long as I wanted. Didn't have to worry. It was just great. It actually brought me closer to nature by being on a bike. Now biking, no matter where you go, is a great family activity and makes a really special memory. But the downside is that often people are of different levels. The thing about e-bikes is that it will bring everyone up to the same level. I camped next to Jim and Julie and they said before e-bikes they could never ride together. She has a medical condition that doesn't allow her to go very fast, so the e-bikes allow them to bike together side by side. They were overjoyed. So in a family with different levels, kids or people that are older not wanting to go as fast, an e-bike can really even it out so you stay together. Another advantage of an e-bike is that you can go further so you'll see more. Did I mention that there's 60 miles of bike trails in the Grand Canyon? That's a lot. With an e-bike, you've got a battery so you can go further and you can just turn up the assist so if you get tired, you can still make it back. E-bikes are allowed in all national parks, but the restrictions vary depending on what class and also where they allow the bikes to go. So definitely check that out before you go. Well, let me show you my tires. You can do a little bit of trail riding on these four inch fat tires. Dirt, gravel, paved, unpaved, you can go just about anywhere. This is great for doing anything off-road, not serious mountain biking, but any like crushed gravel trails. For example, in Acadia National Park, I've never been there there's 45 miles of carriage trail it's only open to pedestrians horses 
and bicycles. This has no cars on it and it is crushed gravel and dirt road, which would be perfect for the Juiced Rip Current S. Now I've been riding Juiced e-bikes for two years. In fact, I rode this one from Pittsburgh to DC, which is over 300 miles. If you're interested in a Juiced e-bike, don't pay full price. There's a special link in the description with a coupon code. Now the downsides of biking in the national park is number one, if you're on the road, not on a bike trail, you're most likely on a narrow curvy road. I really don't recommend it. There's just too many cars and there's too many people sightseeing, so it's just too dangerous. I recommend that you stay on the designated bike pass. Now that brings us to the next downside and that is some of these bike paths can be crowded with people. At the Grand Canyon, there was only a small section where there were a lot of people and I actually was biking on a weekend. I went there twice and I biked on a Saturday and Sunday. When I went further from the congested areas, there just wasn't a lot of people. But when there are people on the trails, you definitely need to slow down. There's often children. Children can be unpredictable. You need to have a horn or a bell and definitely call out so people know you're coming. If you're going to be riding an e-bike, you'll want an e-bike compatible helmet. Ex Nido is one of the few companies with e-bike rated helmets. In fact, their helmets are rated at 28 miles per hour. It has extra padding in the front and the back, but yet it's still really lightweight and it has built-in lights in the front and the back. I only got this helmet just yesterday and it's already my go-to helmet. If you're interested in the Ex Nido helmet, there's a special link in the description. I stayed at Grand Canyon Camper Village, which is a campground just a mile from the South Rim entrance of the Grand Canyon. I found this campground using my favorite app. It's RV Trip Wizard. I love it. I used to dread planning. It used to take three or four hours at a time to plan maybe just a month or two. Now it's so easy. In fact, I sat down and I was able to map out the entire year using RV Trip Wizard. It didn't take that long at all and it was actually pretty fun. Fun. If you decide that you only want to stay in national parks, it has a great filter you can just put in national parks and you can find campgrounds right there. If there's certain amenities that you want, like full hookups, you can put that in the filter and it will find only those campgrounds. You can sort by price, reviews. I've been using RV Trip Wizard for the last year and a half of my four and a half years on the road and it's been such a game changer. I was basically trying to reinvent the wheel before I used it and I would do all the research myself, trying to figure out distances and weather and trying to map it all out. Well, RV Trip Wizard does all that for you. You can actually put in the size of your rig, the length of your rig, the height of your rig. You can also so easily change your plans. If you're interested in RV Trip Wizard, don't pay full price. I have a special coupon code for you where you can get 25% off and there's a free seven day trial. Yellowstone National Park has a lot of mountain biking, which may be a little too extreme, but it also has a dirt and gravel road close to cars, which might be perfect. Smoky Mountains is our most visited national park. They have an 11 mile bike loop and they have a couple other bike trails. There's even bike rentals in the park. Yosemite has 12 miles of paved bike path. I have been on them. You go along the water. It's very scenic. There are bikes available for rent inside the park. Zion National Park is a great place to ride a bike from what I'm hearing. By the time you see this video, you should see some footage of me riding in that national park if all goes well. They have over 30 miles of trails and they even have an entrance just for bicyclists. I had so much fun biking in the national parks. I'm going to try and do this at every national park that I go to. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. And let me know your favorite national park or the next one I should put on my list. Thanks for watching. And as always, these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing.